Before the break, I showed you the first and second pattern alteration, and now I'm going to go over the third, which is the sash. The first one goes around the neck, and the second one goes around the waist. So the first sash measurement is this right here. You place your measuring tape in the center front at the waistline here, about where your belly button is, and you measure up along the neckline, around the back, Make sure you follow the edge of the lace to the lowest point. Come around, measuring down right here to the centre. For me, that's about 54 inches plus seam allowance. For the waist sash, you're going to take your waist measurement and then add whatever length you would like the ties to be. I like about 30 inches. Now, don't forget when you cut out your two sashes to cut on the bias. Now I'm going to share with you a tip for working with sheer fabrics. Now what we have to remember when working with a see-through fabric is that whatever we do on the inside, we're going to see it from the outside. So imagine we've got a seam running down the inside of our arm here. You're going to see the seam through. Now what we can do is kind of neaten up this seam edge by using a technique called a French seam. Now, a regular seam, I'm going to show you here in my son's cute little t-shirt. Let's just turn this inside out. Here we have a really nicely finished, overlocked, surged edge. This looks great, and it's fine when you have a fabric that you can't see through. But the problem with a sheer fabric is even that's not going to look that great from the outside. But what we can do is use a French seam. Now, a French seam is pretty much like a regular seam, except it's in reverse. So place your two pattern pieces wrong sides together. Sew along the edge, leaving a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance, and trim the excess. It helps to press the seam open at this point. Turn inside out, and stitch along the edge at a quarter of an inch seam allowance totaling a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance as the pattern suggests. Now what you're left with is a perfectly finished seam that's going to look great from the outside and the inside and once you've pressed it it's going to look even better. Now that that's done, let's take a closer look at the accessories from the time of Lady Mary. Oversized hats matching the dress or suit with floral arrangements atop were very fashionable as were long beaded necklaces of pearls. Lace up leather ankle boots with a small heel. Ribbons tied around broad rimmed hats. Handheld fans and headscarves. Theatrically sculptured feather headpieces. Fur stoles and coats. Drop earrings and delicate gloves. Brooches were also a very typical accessory of the time. Accessories can make or break a look, so it's important to have options. Let's take a look at some. First off, hats. I picked this one out at TJ Maxx or TK Maxx if you're in the UK. I don't know why it's different, but it is. I like this one because it's got this kind of like herringbone tweed look about it that's very Lady Mary Goes Hunting. Now it had this leather belt on it, I'm not too keen about that, so I'd probably take that off and maybe put a ribbon or a rosette. But my favorite hat is this brown one. Now I like the fact that it's tailored looking, it looks like it's quite masculine, so it looks like something that a man would wear. And the time period that we're trying to draw our inspiration from, it was all about women becoming independent and trying to, you know, live up to their male counterparts. It is a little drab though. This brown color is going to look great with my dress because pinks and browns are really good color combination. But because it's all brown, this little belt section kind of like blends in with the hat. So what I'm going to do to accent that is stick a little vintage butterfly brooch here on this part. I think that looks cool. Speaking of brooches, got a selection here. I think sashes are a great canvas for brooches. I could maybe take this fairy wand here and just stick it like that. I think that'll look cool. And then I've got a pair of pearl earrings. I mentioned a little earlier that I thought pearls would be a great way to dress it up. So for a night look, I'd probably go with the pearls and then a nice pair of heels, something neutral like these ones here. Now these ones I also got at TJ Maxx and I just love these. These are brown brogues and they've got this stitching detail around here 
also very masculine and very, very telling of the time. So that's gonna look really period and really vintage, which is what we want. But they were very affordable and they were on sale, so I'm getting that vintage look without breaking the bank. I think the brown is gonna look great with the hat and it's something fresh and modern, updating the look that we have, which is what we're trying to do. So now that we've seen all our options, let's put it all together and see what we've got. Here's our finished project, a versatile dress that will look at home practically anywhere. Now let's accessorize. This dress is so versatile, it can be styled very differently with accessories. A brown hat with a brooch for the day. Masculine flats to get an edgier look. Add glamour with fur for the evening. Pair with heels for a totally feminine look. Throw on a leather jacket to dress it down for a more low-key event. Today I'm going for the complete Downton Abbey experience in celebration of the new episodes. These vintage gloves I picked up recently should help complete the look. I'm going to sit in the garden, have a cup of tea and a jam tart. My personal favourite are from Bird's Bakery. If you're ever in the British Midlands, do check them out. Mmm, well worth the journey. Well that's it for this episode, I hope you enjoyed watching. Please check out our website, thehollywoodsew.com, for more tips and tutorials and for upcoming projects that you can vote on. I hope you join us for the next instalment. Until then, that's a wrap. Oh dear.